you work here? No, Esther, I'm picking up your trash. Who's because... that? He looks thirsty. Hi, Bambi. You can take care of a child. You gotta learn how to drive. I'm 10. Welcome to Screen Recaps, and today we are going to recapping the movie Wildflower. The movie opens with B, our protagonist, being rushed to the hospital after falling into a coma. As doctors examine her, B's chaotic family pays her a visit. Still in a coma, B decides to recount her backstory, explaining how she ended up hospitalized. B's parents, Sharon and Derek, have intellectual disabilities. A drunk driving accident stunted Derek's mental development at age 12. Sharon's brain never fully developed, leading others to believe she couldn't live independently. Despite these challenges, Sharon and Derek fell in love instantly and eventually married. Though initially uncertain, their parents reluctantly approved the union. Derek's mother, Loretta, wanted Sharon sterilized, believing the couple incapable of raising children. Sharon's mother, Peg, protested, but Sharon's father, Earl, refused to care for another child after raising his intellectually disabled daughter for 21 years. Assuming the newlyweds lacked romantic interest, they took no action. Shortly after marrying, Sharon gave birth to B, named after her favorite cartoon character, Bambi. The arrival intensified pressure on Sharon's parents, who housed the couple. Initially, Sharon's parents, Peg and Earl, helped care for B. As sole breadwinner, Earl soon suggested Derek move out with his family. Peg wanted them to stay, distrusting their ability to care for themselves or the baby. However, Derek decided they must leave and live independently as a family. Soon after, they moved to Nevada, initially living in a van before buying a house. In the present, social worker Mary arrives to investigate B's hospitalization. Through flashbacks, we learn B's childhood was joyful and fun as her parents worked hard to provide for her. However, when B turned 10, her parents placed more responsibilities on her, even teaching her to drive at a very young age in case Derek couldn't. In exchange for learning, Derek promised B anything she wanted, leading her to get a dog named Godzilla. Despite living happily in a trailer park and later their home, from a very young age, B shouldered heavy responsibilities, including caring for herself, her dog, and even her mother. During a driving lesson, B tells her father how classmates call them saddening Derek that his daughter must face such unjust judgments, but he assures her that they are just special. One day, Sharon accidentally leaves the door open, and Godzilla, their dog, escapes. Determined to retrieve her beloved pet, B decides to use her dad's truck to chase after him. As expected, the ten-year-old crashes the truck, prompting a visit from child services and her first meeting with Mary, the social worker. During her conversation with Mary, B expresses her inability to care for Godzilla and her parents at the same time. Following this incident, B's aunt and uncle, Joy and Ben, consider having B spend some time with them. B spends the summer at Joy and Ben's house, a disorienting experience as she's unused to someone else caring for her. When she nearly drowns in the pool, her uncle realizes B needs more parental guidance and support. Joy and Ben decide to take a bigger role in raising B, focusing on her education. Consequently, B starts private school and becomes best friends with Nia, excelling in her studies and joining the track team. However, she continues facing bullying, mainly from Astrid, the popular girl. One day at lunch, the handsome Ethan approaches B after seeing her dozing in biology and gives her his notes. Nia suggests Ethan may like B and shares what she knows of him, that he's a cancer survivor and has wealthy parents. B eventually dates Ethan after connecting at a party. Though excelling in school, she constantly worries about her parents caring for themselves. As a senior, her guidance counselor, Mr. Vasquez, persistently encourages her to apply to college, saying she has the grades and achievements, but she only applies to community colleges, hesitant to leave her dependent parents. Despite her potential for aid, B believes they need her support and won't manage without her. Still, Mr. Vasquez asks her interests. B says she loves astronomy so he suggests UCLA's renowned program. Later, finding an old hat from her uncle, B decides to apply to UCLA. As she spends more time with Ethan and agrees to attend prom, it strains her friendship with Nia. 
B's relationship with Ethan, who wholeheartedly accepts her, helps her realize that she need not listen to bullies like Astrid who belittle her. During cleaning duties at school, Astrid makes classist remarks towards B as usual. B finally stands up to the bully and puts Astrid in her place. As prom approaches, B works extra shifts to support her family and save up for a prom dress. She sets aside money from each paycheck for her responsibilities and wishes, like going to Disneyland. Once she has enough savings, she goes dress shopping with Nia. Nia seems upset that B has been spending less time with her lately. The two girls get into an argument, causing Nia to storm off and leave B at the store alone. Meanwhile, Sharon, alone, goes to buy sweets at the grocery store. Some kids convince her to illegally buy them alcohol. Sadly, Sharon is arrested. Derek causes a scene with police and is also arrested for interfering. Furious, B has to use her savings to bail out her parents. At home, she confronts them for wasting her money. She learns Derek lost his job and prevented Sharon from getting disability benefits. Derek insists Sharon is just special, not disabled. Frustrated, B reminds him her mom is disabled, not just special. Derek loses patience and slaps B, who now resents her parents. At school, B tells Mr. Vasquez she won't attend college to care for her parents. She skips class with Ethan and shares her concerns about leaving her parents alone. Ethan says they managed fine when she was a baby and would likely be okay if she went away to college. He thinks she's using them as an excuse to avoid adulthood. Offended, B mentions possibly having to care for Ethan if his cancer returns. Ethan takes offense and breaks up with her. Despite the drama, B reconciles with Naya, who was upset that B decided to go to prom after they agreed not to. B goes to Naya's house to apologize. Nia has a prom date, so B encourages her to go and have fun, despite B canceling her own prom plans after Ethan broke up with her. B helps Nia get ready for prom before going home. Feeling lonely, B decides to take control by selling raffle tickets to win a trip to Las Vegas and visit Disneyland. In her desperation, she drinks whiskey before selling tickets. Drunk, she accepts a ride from Andy, a college-age brother of a classmate. Andy sexually assaults B in the van while his friend Damien drives. B tries escaping, but Andy pulls her back. She vomits and falls, hitting her head. The boys panic, dropping her at a hospital before fleeing. Regaining consciousness, B expresses love for her family. After a review by social worker Mary, who says her family isn't the craziest, Ethan apologizes, reconciling with B. Discharged, B slowly recovers and graduates alongside Nia. Despite hesitating, B has a heartfelt talk with her dad, gaining courage to apply and get into her dream college. Her proud family celebrates B's achievements. On graduation day, her parents excitedly drive her to college, singing about UCLA. The movie ends with real family photos, noting B is in her third year at UCLA. I thought I was done.